Ed from Black Label Society on Planet Rock, taken from their new album Order of the Black, which has just come out. Well, frontman Zach Wilde was over in London recently, so we met up for a chat, and he was on fine form too, I can tell you. So I began by asking him to tell me a little bit about the new release. Yes, well, it's a new anti-terrorist album, <laughs> and it will bring world peace because we will stop out terrorism. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that sounds perfect. That's a game plan. <laughs> Where did it come from? How you know? How long did this take to put together? Um, uh, actually wrote, recorded, and mixed it in ninety-four days. Wow, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't need to take eight months to make a record. When I'd hear these stories about bands working five years on an album, I, I you know, I mean, five years—it's just like. Uh, I don't know how you do that. I mean, like, Axel took 14 years to put that album out. Yeah. I mean, so many things have changed in 14 years. I mean, it's like the guys in Led Zeppelin. I mean, it, it was 10 years, their career, you know, from the first album to Into the Outdoor. Oh, yeah. You know, by the time they did Into the Outdoor, you're, they're, a bunch, they're a whole bunch of different guys. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and their first two albums, they recorded, like, within about six months, right? Yeah, totally. Um, but um, but so whereabouts did you record this? Do you have a home studio? Or do you go somewhere special? Yeah, the black like uh, the black label bunker, and um, yeah, so that's where we, I mean we road tested it, so we recorded and we also mixed it in there. So I mean we were originally going to mix it somewhere else. We tried it somewhere else, and uh, I thought the mixes at the bunker sounded better. I mean your ears aren't going to lie, you know. Yeah. So uh, we just a beat it, and uh, I was just like. I'm super happy with the bunker. I could do everything inside there now. So do you all work on this together, or do you kind of do you take the lead in this? Well, no, obviously, uh, you know, it, I'm credited as producing the album, but, I mean, J.D., you know, he's my right-hand guy when we're in there. We just call him, not the associate producer, disassociate producer, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, Adam, our engineer, Adam did a great job, too. So, you know, it's just a matter of us sitting there doing it, and then we'll both, you know, me and J.D. would listen to it, and i go, you know, either that's slamming or I could get it better or, you know, what JD's playing bass, it's like, why don't you just do more of this or more of that? You know, so we pretty much know what the hell we're doing. So, I mean, it's just like, uh, and you know what you like hearing. So, you know, we just leave it at that. I mean, I, I really don't need somebody telling me whether something's sharp or flat, you know what I mean? Or uh -huh. I can sing it better or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you, um, do you tend to kind of arrive with stuff already written do you write all the time or do you kind of sit in there and say right today we're gonna uh, write something well no no I, when we did the record put it this way uh i think the only song that was sitting around the two songs was shallow grave i wrote mm. on a piano mm, yeah that's and, a lovely uh, one thanks man and then uh also january the last song on the record right. uh, the acoustic song yeah yeah but uh the rest of them uh, I, I wrote them all when we were in the studio See, it's really interesting that you pick those two as well, only because, you know, obviously we know you as like, you know, I guess, uh, 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 for want of a better phrase, a mad axeman, and, you know, that's meant as a compliment, but there are a few, more than a few tender moments on this record. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you got, what, uh, Time Waits for No One, uh, Shallow Grave, Darkest Days, and uh, January. Yeah. Four mellow songs. Yeah, yeah. You know, then the rest of them, you know, then nine, nine rock songs, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And boy, do they rock. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and tell me, in terms of, you know, because Black Label Society is, what, 12 years old now? Yeah. 12. You know, did you expect Black Label Society to be embraced the way it has been? Because you guys really have, you know, hardcore fans now, and a lot of them. Well, I mean, the, the whole thing is... Uh Oh, right from the beginning, you know, with all the chapters and everything like that. It, it, like I say, with Black Label, we don't have fans. It's uh, Black Label has fans, so it's one gigantic family. Yeah. And because I, I, I always thought it was the coolest thing when uh, my buddy Scott, his older brother, he was a big deadhead. Right. And I, but I just always thought it, the coolest thing. I mean, uh, about the dead was it wasn't a. It just wasn't a band. It was like a lifestyle, and it was. Uh, it just the way it just brought every all these people together you know what i mean so uh and then the cool thing about black label it's like the same type of mentality i mean you could be from you know 
you could be from Birmingham and your buddy lives in, you run into a guy that lives in Burm, uh, London and you have the black label stuff on the colors on or whatever. You just go, hey, dude, what's going on? And one guy's name is Andy, the other guy's Joe. It's just like, how long have you guys known each other? It's like, oh, dude, I met him in a pub in, in London somewhere. And ever since then, we've been buddies and now he's the best man at my wedding. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, it's just the band's a great way to just bring people together, you know. Um, now then, I, I, I'm not sure if you've done this already, um, but I, I was reading about your appearance at a prison over here in England. Uh, yeah, no, a buddy of, uh, a buddy of mine, Kevin, he's a, a black label brother. Mm -hmm. He, uh... He asked me a while ago. He said, "Hey Zach, would you be interested in you know some of the, a bunch of the guys that are in here uh, on good behavior? Some of them are going to be getting out and stuff like that. We just like doing you know things for them because they've been uh, you know trying to get their life together and turn things around. So you know, Black Label supports the military and we support the, you know a bunch of our buddies are in law enforcement. So the whole thing is uh, you know where they do security with Black Label, they're either military or law enforcement guys. So yeah, anything when we get asked to do." any benefit or charity type things we always we're always up for that yeah yeah well that's uh, and, and you know i think it's one of those things that uh i well johnny cash did it didn't do him any harm you know? no i mean we'll put it this way a bunch of guys they know what they did they messed up i mean the whole thing is you know i don't go in there as like a motivational speaker you know i talk to them about you know about music or whatever you know if they want to ask me aussie stories or anything like that just tell them i talk, I talk to them like if i was talking to them in a pub you know what i mean yeah. so uh but the thing is, um, I go down there and jam for them, and you know the guys are just—they get a little bit of time out of the out of the day to just do that. You know what I mean? So it's just like uh, I put it this way, and the guys are trying to turn their lives around, so it's a positive on all sides, you know. Yeah, yeah, very much so, very much so. I have to ask you about Ozzy because you just mentioned him there, and you're playing some Ozzy.